Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. And as always, we love the community. Please comment. And we're going to share again today because sharing is something that we feel is most important. And uh, we like to share our tips and tricks and things that we discover along the way. Um, and in doing that, we're going to do a video today on making a homemade pneumatic press for fruits. And we're going to do it with some items that you'll find laying around in the garage, probably. Uh, but it'll be very inexpensive, and it'll help you along your way. Now, and now, in the light of sharing, let me share something else with you that I found. Um, and there's no obligation, but check this out. Well, here's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'm outside because, you know, a lot of times my work takes me outside work because it just doesn't fit anywhere else. And uh, the challenge I have down here in Texas is the triple-digit days. So now I can work outside. I've got my new Air uh, AF520B outdoor misting fan. Uh, and this thing is amazing. Uh, it, matter of fact, it claims that it will cool 500 square feet. And I'm here to tell you, sitting way back there, I can feel the cool air now. Uh, the misting cool air uh, out here in this heat. Now, I know I'm in the shade, but uh, shade doesn't keep you cool. The fan will. Now, it, it's an oscillating fan, so you can move it around. It's got three different speeds. You can adjust the water flow. Uh, it's, it's an amazing product. It actually delivers on what it promises. So, whether you're outside and you have a social event, or whether you're outside working, or whatever it is you want to do, but you want to try to maintain a little bit of coolness, Click the link below and uh, use this uh, this code and uh, get your 20% discount. Now, we get nothing out of this. This is purely for you. So that's my first share. Now, on to um, a pneumatic press. Now, you know, I had the 30 liter, you know, the big old hand crank press. It's a big fruit press, and it's made for that purpose. Uh, and that thing gets really, really hard after a while. You're cranking down on it to try to press that fruit down and get all those juices out. And that really comes in handy, but I got to thinking, everybody doesn't have one of those or have access to one, but we've got access to some things laying around that we could probably repurpose. So, um, I was really motivated by a pneumatic press that I got to witness in operation, so I have already adapted my 30 liter fruit press to a pneumatic press by adding an inner tube inside and I'll show you that on another video. Or maybe at the end of this video, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and then using air pressure in order to press those fruits. And then I got to thinking, you know, this is probably something that everybody should have, or at least access to some sort of press. So, look, I've got a, a, a bucket. Uh, now, this is a pretty stout bucket. Any bucket will not work. Um, Here's what I recommend. Find you, but this one had uh, chlor uh, chlorinating granules in it. So I know it's a clean bucket and I've cleaned it out really good. Uh, but what it has is it has up around the top here, you see it's got this oh, sort of like a thread for the lid to actually screw down on it. Uh, the regular lids that just pop down on a bucket, I don't think they're going to be as helpful to you, although you can find a way to secure it. But the point is, is that you want the lid to go on, you see, and it screws down. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of wood that fits directly inside here. And then we'll put the fruit in, we'll put the wood in, we'll lay our inner tube on top, and then we're going to take another piece of wood, excuse me, place that on top. And the reason I want to do that is because you know that when you add pressure, and you increase the square inches that that pressure is displaced over, that you're actually increasing the pressure per square inch over whatever it is you're pushing. Hmm. Really, and to make it simple, what it is is I'm going to try to make sure that the pressure that goes up, instead of trying to pop this lid off and potentially stripping those threads, what I want to do is I want to displace all that pressure around the outside rim where it's actually where it's sealed instead of up through the center which it would probably do if I didn't do that so I have a piece of wood sitting on top of there so it displaces all that pressure evenly around the entire lid you follow me well let's get to work here and I'll show you how I'm going to do this because this adaptation is relatively straightforward now there are probably hundreds of ways you can do this or hundreds of items that you could 
do this with. Uh, as long as you've got a, a vessel of some sort with a lid, a top that you can secure, and then have a hole in here to have access to, you can insert an inner tube and you've got your own homemade press. All right, let's get to work because what you'll need is uh, I have found, and doing these before, I have found now that you've got two types of inner tubes. You've got the inner tubes with the bent, and you'll see that, with a bent stem, and then you'll have inner tubes that have a straight stem that just sticks straight out. The ones with the bent stem really do work a lot better. Uh, and that's only because it doesn't get, the one, one I had in there got caught and it started to put, and it actually ripped the side of this. So I got the bent stem, I haven't had that problem since. Uh, this is an extension hose, and you can get these just about anywhere. They come off of a bicycle pump, or uh, this one came out of a hardware store. Uh, and it's an extension hose for a, a plumbing plug that you insert, and it's pneumatic, it expands and seals. And this fits directly on top of this inner tube, it goes right in there. So now that I've, now I've got a line in which I can get to it. So bear with me, we're going to go ahead and cut this out. I've got the wood, I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to use a piece of old uh, cutting board that I had laying around because we're done using this one. So I'm going to use this. You could probably use just about anything. A good thick piece of plywood would probably do, but just make sure that you sand it down. Uh, and we're not worried as much about sanitation with this and sanding it down as we are smoothness because any little bump or splinter or anything can puncture your tire. You don't want that to happen. So, and there are ways to prevent that as well. We'll lay a piece of plastic down on top of it to give it just that little bit of buffer. Maybe lay a piece of plastic on top with that other one. So I'm gonna cut one out of this hardwood and use this for the press that goes on top of the fruit. And then I'm gonna cut a small piece of uh, plywood uh, to go on top so that we've got that, that barrier. You ready? Let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I did was you have to measure the uh, the opening and this one is 11 and an eighth inches across. So if you take 11 inches, half of 11 inches is five and a half inches. Uh, so that's the that would be the radius of, of your circle. So if I took the, uh, it's 11 and an eighth. So if I went five and a half, that would leave me with an eighth left over. So I went just a tad. What I want is I want this piece of wood to fit around the circumference of this bucket, but I don't want it to get caught. So I want to have just a little bit of playroom. So we'll make this thing 11 inches and we'll leave that eighth. That'll be a 16th all, just about all the way around. And that'll give just a little bit of room. Now some juice may come up and that's fine because you're going to pour that out anyway. But we're just trying to get all the juices out of our fruits. Now, I have other, a co another couple of options that I, that I kind of went through in my mind mentally, and, and I thought about it. Uh, you know, once you put the fruit in here and you start to press, if you have holes all around this bucket, what will happen is, uh, invariably, what will happen is you're going to weaken the integrity of this bucket and and of course, if you put too much pressure in anything, it's going to give. Something's going to give somewhere. So uh, the bucket may explode. You don't want that or crack open. So it's only going to be able to withstand a certain amount of pressure. But it's that pressure that you don't have to push on and squeeze. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You've been through this. So what we're going to do is, and as soon as I find it, because i got it laying around here somewhere, I'm going to put a spigot in the side of this bucket right here on the very bottom. Uh, and I might put one on the other side. Um, and, and the reason for that is, is I want a way to get that out and uh, the, the juice out. And we'll put a standoff on the inside so that it doesn't get all clogged up with uh, any kind of pulp that's there. You know, it, it's going to be really, really difficult to prevent that. But it just may happen. And if it does, it's simple. Just release the air, take the top off, pull out... The, uh, the wood, clear it out, and then start all over again. Uh, but I'm sure you'll be successful. So let's get this thing rocking. Once I get the, I got a piece of wood here, and I've measured in five and a half inches and five and a half inches. What I need is I need is a circle. I'm just going to tie a piece of string to this pencil and tie it to this nail that I put in the very center, and I'm going to draw a circle. And then we're going to cut that out, and I'll sand that off real quick. And then we'll just make sure it fits inside the bucket. 
All right. Well, I, okay. I've got everything cut and everything set, put together. I want to show you this now. You know, no good plan survives first contact. And the first time I cut, I cut these blocks and I cut this one the size of this one and this one the size of I got them backwards. And I wanted to use the thick one uh, for the bottom, so I had to recut them. But you'll notice how I did that. You know, I measured the bottom and cut, and then I measured the top and cut this one. So this one will sit on top, and this one goes on top the fruit. Now, uh, I did design a little baffle, and this is the baffle that's going to go. See, here's my spigot, and I've got, this is just a real, it's a drum spigot off and on, uh, and it opens the largest. Um, and so and I did that so in case something got stuck in there, it'd be easy. You can open it up, stick a piece of wire in there, and you, you can unclog it. Uh, now, to prevent it from getting really clogged up, what I did is I made this baffle. I took some PVC pipe. I put a cap on the end of it. You'll see that I've drilled several holes, and I drilled it, it looked like a flute, all the way through it on that side and this side, and then also on the other side. So they're, they're kind of opposite each other. And then I... All I had to do was just sand this down a little bit to make sure it fits right inside. And that's what it's going to look like inside the bucket. So that when all that fruit is pressed, all those juices should go inside these holes and then run out here. Now, is this thing going to stop up? Look, we're hand making this. Yeah, it's going to stop up. Are you going to have to take it apart and clean That's why we don't glue it. Yeah, you got to take it apart and clean it. Um, but my goodness, you know, now you'll have a pneumatic press and we're going to show you how it works we're going to do it right here so hang in there let me get my fruit ready and uh then we'll attach everything and we'll pump it up and show you well we're finally down to the last part now you'll see here i've got the uh i've got the baffle inside with the spigot on the side and i'm going to cut this watermelon in half we're going to add some watermelon in there and then what i'll do is uh i'll get it all set up and then we'll be right back Glad you're back. Last step. Okay, I put the, I've got my fruit into about here. Oh yeah, about here. And I've got, I uh, put a small inner tube already, the 10, oh yeah, the 10 inch. I blew it up a little bit because what I wanted is I wanted some space in here. I wanted to reduce the amount of space. So if you've got just a little bit of fruit, which is that's all we've got is just one watermelon in here. Uh, what I, what it was really, it was just so far from the top. I just wanted to get rid of some of that volume, that space. So I did that. Now remember, um, it, when you do this, uh, you'll probably, once you start to push the fruit down and you get that wide space, you may have to stop, let the air out, open the bucket up, put something else in there in order to take up that space so you can start pressing again. All right, so don't just you know, press and then you're stopped and you're done. It, it, it's gonna take a little bit of finagling. Remember, it's homemade, but it works great. Okay, uh, now, and I know some of you people might say, oh, well, George, you're using watermelon. That's just so easy. Well, yeah, it is easy. Um, I probably would not do grapes. I mean, um, apples. Uh, I, I would do grape uh, or any other kind of soft fruit. Uh, but apples, you know, apples are so fibrous and they're so tough. Um, it's really, really hard. Look at that. It goes right on. And I've got my hose hanging out. Let's give her some air and see what it does. And I did put the, I put the lid on top. Oh, okay, let's open up our lid. Wait a minute. There we go, we've got some pressure in there now. And look at that, we've got a fruit press. And we're just pressing all of that juice and everything that's out of that watermelon, out of that fruit. It's working like a charm, just like I expected it to. So from here on out, we just keep adding air and we just let this thing run. So until next time, and as always, whatever makes you happy and if it makes you feel good, do it as often as you possibly can. And happy brewing.